Hi folks, so I thought it would be helpful to make a video on the wood miser that I have and show a realistic expectation of how much time it actually takes to set up a wood miser. Um, whenever you see these machines advertised, um, it looks so simple and easy. Now I can tell you after a couple of years of running one of these things, uh, on the portable end, uh, I'm not a stationary set it and forget it. I'm out in the field, I'm working, and I have to do this multiple times a year um, to set up the mill. And I think it is pretty easy, but I'm going to go ahead and show you in a realistic time frame how long it takes to actually set one of these mills up. Now let me show you some of the tools that are required to do this. There's actually a specific spot where this goes. It is a rod that you use uh, for all of the outriggers in the machine to stabilize it. A pair of gloves is always helpful. You see right here I have a tire jack. You can use one from your car or truck to do this. Uh, the axle is somewhere around 3,000 pounds, so it's not too tough to lift it. You are definitely going to need your most important tool, which is a level. Without a level, it's really impossible to set it up correctly. Uh, the, mach the machine will not operate at optimum performance if it's not level, so you need one of those. And you're going to need some blocks. If you're a sawmill operator, you should have plenty of those on hand already. And that just makes sure uh, the outrigger already has a base and a foot on it. But you just want to give it a little bit more of a platform because what you'll find is uh, oftentimes you're on soggy ground or somewhere thereabouts and it helps to have a little bit wider surface area uh, to set that up. So let's go ahead and set up the mill and we'll see how long this actually takes. Let down the dust chute. We got to unhook this chain here. It's an emergency chain so that if you're driving down the road and somehow uh, the head comes loose on the machine uh, that it doesn't go back and forth and you don't lose it completely. That rod I showed you earlier is right here. It's located on the back outrigger uh, on the side. My machine is equipped with a debarker. It runs on an electric motor and there's this cover on top of it. You want to remove that cover so that airflow can get into the motor. If you've been driving, hopefully the fenders are on it. There's a rubber, a rubber strap on the back there that hooks on. Remove the fenders on both sides and set them aside. The next thing is this rear outrigger. Now, don't put it all the way down. Put it part of the way down because we still have to level the machine front to back. If this is all the way down, it needs to go down, obviously, to level the machine. You'll have troubles doing that with this outrigger all the way down. This front rigger here, this should already be down from when you had to unhook the trailer when you first got to the job. One of the first things I do is level it side to side before I level it front to back. One of the reasons that I do this is because of the experience. It seems like whenever I have to level it, side to side is usually the bigger problem and causes you bigger problems, at least for me, uh, when it comes to operating the machine. Because of the design of the cantilever head of the wood miser, um, if you're not perfectly level this way, um, you can have some issues with the way your debarker goes, because that of course runs on a spring and a mechanism that allows that to go back and forth, and the head design itself. So let me get the jack and we'll start lifting this up. Okay, I already have my level right here. I'm going to start lifting this, keeping my eye on the centering bubble there. Almost there. All right, now from, again, experience, I know that I have to go a little bit beyond level now that I'm up here because it's actually, it's not going to be the jack that keeps this thing standing upright. Jacks are movable. They can be wobbled back and forth when you get logs in the mill and basically cause your whole assembly to collapse. It's actually going to be the outriggers that hold the machine up. So, as you can see, the wheel is off the ground. So it's going to be the outriggers that hold it up. Let's keep going. I'm just taking this shot so you can see that bubble is just a little bit past level. Okay, I haven't put any outriggers down yet, except the front one is down from when we unhitched it. 
And now I put it level the other way and I can see I have to come up this way quite a bit and that's why I didn't put that back one all the way down. Now if I had to move it, it would be very difficult to do that with that back rigger all the way down. So now I'm going to lift the pin up on the outrigger and lift the machine up so that I can try to get it balanced the other way. And I'm going to put one of those wood blocks you saw earlier underneath the front outrigger to prevent it from sinking down into this wet ground any further. Alright, I got my right hand gal here to show you how easy this is here. I'm going to, you ready Miriam? I'm going to lift it and you pull the pin. Ready? Pull. There you go. Alright, let it go. And we still got to go a little bit more yet, kiddo. So, there's a pin or two left on it. I'm going to pull this up again and we'll do the same thing, okay? Ready? Pull it. Yeah. Alright, press, press on the bottom foot there when you're pulling that pin. You can do it. Like this. There we go. getting closer. Here's what I'm going to do, kiddo. I'm going to go get a block and you put the block under there, okay? Alright, sweetie. Just in case we need to uh, put two under there, I got two. So let's start with one, okay? Ready? Put, no, put that block under it when I, when I lifted the sawmill. Ready? Slide it under there. Perfect. All right. Does that look good to you? Look here. Does that look good? Yes. Is it in the middle? Sure. It's a little past that first. Just a little past. And the reason that we do that, the reason why we go a little bit past is so that when we put that back one down, if we jack that up, it'll level the machine right out perfectly flat. All right. Let's move on. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pull this back. Uh, pin all the way out and it actually went right into position which I actually don't want. I want some tension on the rear outrigger so I'm going to get a second board and stick it under there and see if I can lift it up a hair. There you go. All right. Watch out for the camera. All right now I got it in there. Now I can put some tension on it. You hear that clicks it right into place. It's just going just a hair uh, downhill, but that's kind of what I want because the machine is a lot more aggressive in reverse than it is in forward and this allows it just a hair to go down into the cut, which is just fine. And you know, if it is just a hair off, oh, that's livable. You can deal with that, but if it's way off, you will notice the machine uh, behaving differently mechanically. Now that this plane is correct, now we're going to check this way one more time. And if that's good, then we're going to put all the outriggers down, snap them all into place, and then most of our work is done. Right, we're going to put a block under here. We're going to put a block under there. Pull our outriggers. Okay, there's two more outriggers left. There's this one right here, which is pretty easily accessed with the sawmill head down in the starting position. And that already went into place and that's fine with me actually because I know that the weight of the mill will eventually push that down flat. The other outrigger is back right underneath the head and you can kind of get to it and pull it here, but it's far easier to do uh, once the sawmill head is all the way up. Now I see that popped right back into place too. As the machine is running and operating, and I'll see how it's shifting and balancing, I'll know if I like that or not. Now remember, I left my jack on it the whole time. Now you won't always have to use a jack, obviously. You'll be on flat terrain like one in a million times, but more often than not you'll have to level the machine up one way or the other. But I'm going to let that jack down and see how this machine balances out for its final fit. All right, I still got my level on it up here. I'm just going to let it down nice and easy, hopefully. There we go. And that is actually absolutely perfect. And I guarantee there was no uh, movie magic editing involved there. Next is kind of the fun part. And the customer, when you're setting up for them, this seems to be the part that 
they really enjoy for some reason and that's when they get to see the mill actually start moving because you're testing the hydraulics and the ups and downs and all that you can hear the motor running and it's kind of when it gets real for the customer you want to let that motor run up for about 30 seconds before you start moving stuff around at least on my machine um, otherwise there can be a little bit of a drag on it while the machine is running up, you can go around and start spraying things down with lube. Uh, Woodmizer's preferred lubrication for their machine is going to be, believe it or not, transmission fluid uh, is used for just about everything to make it run smoothly. So you can start doing that on the mast. You can do that on the rails back and forth. Of course, I've already done that. The machine should be warm enough now. Let's go ahead and start moving stuff around. I hope you can hear me over the machine. There's a pin right here that the saw head rests on for security purposes and it helps to stabilize it. And when the machine head goes up, it'll move up off of that pin. Now we want to raise the machine high enough so that it can clear the hydraulic. There's a lift, obviously, that lifts the logs, the big log lifter, and you've got to make sure the machine head clears that. Once you clear that, we can go all the way back. Disengage the debarker. The pin right there. I'm going to take down this pin that was holding down the chain head in place. Put the safety pin back in. The machine has this uh, kind of a outboard for a board return on it, and you want to take that off. Now there's another safety pin up here, and you want to put that little hole right on the back of that that sets. You can hopefully see that right there. Now we got to put this thing in place. There's a little notch on the bottom side. You can right into a spot there and you can just pull this other outer down and just put that in. Alright, so the next part is to get your hydraulics in place. This third level over controls the uh, log turn. That'll loosen the chain so you can get your uh, log lifter down. I'm going to show you the video of that going while I'm flipping the switches. to uh, go ahead and run all of your hydraulics around, make sure everything's working properly, and then you'll have the mill pretty much entirely set up. So now pretty much the very last thing that you have to do is just tension your blade, assuming your blade's already on the machine. Once your blade's tensioned, you're going to turn the machine on and off a couple times to make sure it maintains tension, and then you're pretty much ready to cut. All right, so that is pretty much all there is to setting up a wood miser. My model is a wood miser LT40 hydraulic. I am very seriously considering upgrading this to a wood miser LT40 super hydraulic and when and if I do I will be making a video of the process of converting the machine up into more power. Um, just a couple things about uh, if you're going out setting up your sawmill for the first time on a sawmill job number one your ground will pretty much never be flat uh, I think I've had two jobs total where I've ever set up in a driveway or anything like that and still it wasn't uh, perfectly flat so there was still some leveling that needed to be done. You know I couldn't just drop the outriggers and go. Um, other things are more cosmetic in nature that makes you look good in front of a customer. Always make sure there's a new blade on the machine when you start a job and that you're not doing that on site. Uh, do that before you get to the job. Likewise, with uh, lubricating the machine, making sure that all of your grease fittings have been greased and ready to go according to the maintenance chart that you find in your wood miser. 
You don't want to show up to a job and be doing all that stuff and wasting a half hour or an hour doing all this stuff in front of your customer. It makes you look sloppy, makes you look lazy. Uh, make sure, that, of course, that you have enough lube in your lubrication system and gas in the gas tank. Other than that, it's actually pretty simple to go ahead and set it all up. As with anything, the devil is in the details, so make sure that everything is in its proper place and the job usually goes just fine. Well, as you can see, uh, I've got quite a few logs here uh, that I've acquired that need to be turned into lumber and slabs and the like. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good one. Oh, but wait, there's at least one more thing that I have to say. <laughs> at least one more. There's probably about at least a hundred more things that I could tell you uh, about what I have learned in the sawmilling business over the last few years. But I'm not going to do that right now. Let me just say this. There's a reason why in my business in particular, there's a setup fee for me to get on location. Now, I have to bring a lot of extra tools. If you see right behind me here, there's a log moving arch. Well, that thing is highly effective on the job site. I've done a review on that actually a couple years ago on the usefulness of this tool, and it's essential. I think almost every job that I've been on, we end up using it eventually at least once or twice because there's some logs that are just too hard to move without it. Um, you bring chainsaws, you bring all of your lubrication that is necessary for the machine, your ATF, your grease, um, you're bringing blocking, you're bringing bolsters to set lumber on more, more often than not. You're bringing tarps, uh, you're bringing stuff to hold tarps down, you're bringing your uh, shovels and sometimes garbage cans so that you can take wood shavings, especially if you are in an urban environment. Uh, you can't just leave your wood shavings all over the driveway or in a neighborhood. There's a lot of things that you do just getting the mill in preparation for a job. And more often than not, sometimes you can spend one or two hours doing that before you even get out there. So from a business perspective, I feel that that time needs to be compensated, let alone the time to drive out there. Um, the customer is not paying for my gas. They're not paying for, for the truck, for the mill or anything, for the chainsaws. And so there's uh, just all kinds of stuff that goes into it that you don't see before you even get to a job. Now when you actually get there and you set up the machine, now how long does it actually take to set up the machine? That's a great question. I think the best time I've ever done this in is actually in about five minutes. And the longest that's ever taken me is probably about 35 to 40 minutes to set up the mill. That was a situation where the ground was horribly not level. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, the front end of the machine where you start before a cut I think uh, the, the controls were about five feet in the air at their lowest setting and so at the highest setting I was reaching up like this to operate the machine because the ground was just so unlevel. I had to do digging for the front loading arms for the logs, I had to dig into the ground to load them up so you know the setups depend but for me the quickest I've ever done it is in about five minutes and the longest is about 40 minutes. I don't think I've ever had a job exceed 40 minutes in setup. So there's the answer to those questions. I guess I'll have to just make more videos uh, to share more information with this crazy business and what it takes to exist and to live within this world of sawmilling. I'm in a completely different stage than what a lot of sawmillers are. Um, pretty much 90% of my work is portable on-site sawmilling. And then some of those jobs result in me being able to use my other skills that I've acquired over the last 15 years of experience and that's in cabinet making, furniture making, and yes, I dabble in acoustic instrument making as well. So, uh, actually my creative capacity started uh, in the woodworking realm and then went into the sawmilling realm so that I could have control of my projects from log to final form. Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do like what you're seeing, as always, click subscribe, comment below, anything that you could do that would be encouraging or uh, supplemental in my journey in sawmilling would be much appreciated. Thanks guys, have a great day.